want to thank um, South by Southwest for inviting us here and making it bring us back to this wonderful family. And I want to fa thank all the journalists and fans of the Evil Dead franchise who helped make this something special and um, something that has now lasted 40 years. We only make these movies to entertain the audience. It came from our young, uh, younger days where we sat with the audience and ran the projectors and we realized, oh, we don't want to bore them um, or make them walk out. So, um, uh, so thank you. We are going to run a question and answer. I'm going to pick some people from the audience so that there will be five at this and five at that. And then I'm going to do the rules uh, of how we're going to play um, the question and answer game. So um, it'll be fun. Um, the only other thing I want to mention is that there are some people who are not on the stage tonight who were instrumental in making the movie. There's um, our two partners from Ireland, McDara and John Kevill, who are out in the audience here somewhere. They were very important in, uh, in, in this co-production. And then there's three members of the family that are not here also. Gabriel Echoes, Morgan Davies, and Nell Fisher. You were missed. Um, they are, as you will see in the movie, what make this a family and, um, and are the subject of a great deal of horror inflicted upon them. So. Um, <laughs> Um, introductions. I'm going to do it my thing, and I think they're supposed to sit somewhere special, but um, I'm going to start with Lee. Um, Lee has a special place in the Evil Dead universe. He was the first Irish writer-director. Lee's also the first person to move the Evil Dead out of the cabin and into the city. Um, he's the first director I've ever worked with who went through a nine-week lockdown because of COVID in New Zealand um, that put a real cramp on our shooting. Um, also, he can sing like an Irish bard. He's um, a wonderful singer. He and I have had some singing events. Um, and then Lee is nothing, nothing if he's not brave. Um, stepping into the shoes that Sam Raimi and Fetty Alvarez once wore makes him relatively brave in my book. But Two years ago this coming weekend, he came to my house in New Zealand for dinner. We said, all right, we're going to take some of this tequila, pour it in a big mason jar, slice like 10 jalapenos and serranos into it, and sealed it up for nine months. Last day of shooting, I brought it back to the set. I said, Lee, here it is. He had forgotten about it, of course. I poured two glasses after the last shot. Lee was covered in blood from a gag that would ha ha happened to him. And we toasted, and I said, Lee, go ahead, you drink first. And he did, and that made him very brave in my book. So um, <laughs> without any further comments, come on up, Lee. Hello. Thank you, Lee. What do I do? I sit down? Yeah, sit down Why not anywhere? anywhere you want. Okay, I'm going to sit down. And then, um, I have an ulcer from that fucking, um, sorry, yeah, <laughs> that tequila. Can you use bad language here just to check in advance? Is it okay? Okay. Okay. Because it's going to um, happen. I'm going to try not to block poorly. Um, another person who needs very little introduction and is really more a myth than a man, Sam Raimi and um, Bruce Campbell and I, for 40 years, have referred to Sam as the master cylinder. Now, he and I both knew what that meant, but a couple people asked me, what does that mean? Who's the master cylinder? So if you look it up, the master cylinder is the evil's cyborg villain in Felix the Cat cartoons. <laughs> Sam, well, Sam, the master cylinder goes around uh, um, blasting death rays from his forehead and saying, I'm king of the moon, king of the moon. And after I thought about it, yeah, that still d defines Sam. But um, <laughs> some of the things you wouldn't know about Sam is that he's a family man. He is the greatest dad ever. He's takes care of his kids, they're here, he takes them anywhere he goes on sets, and um, in the film business, that's really hard to be. Um, and he's a tremendous gardener, plant grower, tree grower. He's growing coffee, showed me that. I'm growing bananas, I've had to call him a few times saying, what do I do with my bananas? Um, I'm worried they're gonna say, join us. But uh, <laughs> without further ado, Sam Raimi. Welcome aboard. Thank you. 
All right. Here's the clown that needs no introduction. <laughs> Host of the last fans, last fan standing. How many here have seen it ever? Oh, Bruce, you need a new marketing team. Okay. <laughs> I had feared that. But um, check it out. He's, he's, um, it's Bruce as a game show host. It's on YouTube, Last Fan Standing. Um, we all know his career in the Evil Dead um, universe. But what you don't know about Bruce is he's the last person to make me cry. So Bruce had starred in a Hallmark movie <laughs> called My Southern Family Christmas. I was hassling him about doing Hallmark movies and, oh, I bet they don't cover you in blood or any of that stuff. And he said, that's right, and they shoot in like 12 days. So um, Bruce said, you know what, Rob? You have to watch it because even an old Scrooge like you is going to cry. So I found an illegal download in New Zealand where I live, <clears throat> watched the movie, watched the pop-ups, Russian girls in your neighborhoods. Okay, all right, fine. And... Um, and at the end, Bruce has this like five minute long monologue to the daughter he didn't know that he ever had and, or had to give up 40 years ago. And I found tears running down my face and I went, it really did or maybe it's just his bad Southern accent. So <laughs> anyways, Bruce Campbell, come on out here. Let's see. Yeah, baby. Hello, sir. All right, now to the newcomers in the family. Um, since most of you know the film business, you know in the film business there's a call sheet. It um, goes out every night, goes to the cast, goes to the crew, says, okay, you're going to do this tomorrow and this is what time they're going to pick you up. So um, um, for Evil Dead Rise, number one on the call sheet um, was Lily Sullivan. Lily is the cheeriest person I've ever had as a number one person on a call sheet, um, and that includes my wife, who was for many years number one on a call sheet for something 25 years ago. Um, in the Evil Dead universe, I'm gonna give some spoilers out today, guys, so I'm really sorry for this, but there's no Boo. way to do it. Do it. So, um, Lily is the first number one on the call sheet in the Evil Dead franchise not to lose an arm. So. Um, she's also the first number one not to be hit by the force. So every other Evil Dead movie has had our heroes or heroines hit by the force. So Lily does not do that. That's but what sequels are for, Rob. That's what's... <laughs> Thank you, Lee. And then um, um, Lily, I, wait, wait, wait. She and I have... Um, <laughs> have had the lovely time of having some evenings together. And while she's not as good a singer as Lee, she goes there more. So something's to be said for that. She um, has another movie here called Monolith, yeah, playing at the festival, so having two movies here. I think Sam might have two movies in town, or is it gone already? It's on its way out. Good, sorry. Um, so... Without further ado, Lily Sul Sullivan, Deadite Killer. Woo! Yeah! Where am I sitting? Right there. Sitting. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, if you've seen the trailer, I'm not giving any, anything away. Um, Alyssa Sutherland is... Um, the bad mom in this. I'm just going to spoil that. Um, she has a distinction uh, in the Evil Dead universe of the most days of any performer in makeup. And um, to be honest, that scared me to death because over the years working with Sam and Bruce, we've seen so many actors and stunt performers hit a point which we refer to as the latex point. They just lose their mind rip off their makeup, can't stop crying for a day. M male, female, doesn't make a difference. The latex doesn't care. It just likes to torment. So, um, uh, Some anyways, people will pay for that experience, Rob. What's that? Some people will pay for that experience. You know what? And perhaps, a side perhaps that's Alyssa, because um, she was tough as nails through the whole thing. 
Um, she's an avid dog lover. She's a master baker, frosting, uh, froster of cakes. Um, if you visit Instagram, it's loaded with dogs and cakes. Um, but there's something else that Alyssa does that um, warmed my old man's heart, um, which is anytime she goes back to Australia, she finds a way to go out fishing with her dad still. And um, uh, I've got two sons who come fishing with me, and that's all my Christmases of the year rolled into one day. So um, without further ado, Alyssa, come come on out. Oh! Yeah, baby. Oh! What's up? What's the key with this? That close? Hello, Mommy. Somewhere, somewhere. <laughs> Hi, Lee. So I'm going to bring somebody up from the audience as my assistant here. Emma, can you please come up? Now, how many people want to ask a question? Could you just do me a favor and stand up everybody who wants to ask a question? Because I'm going to get it down to just five on each side and then move it around. So this, just so I can see everybody who wants to ask a question. Really, the rest of you don't have any questions you want to ask? OK, well, you may in time. So um, those who are standing, close your eyes and think of a number. One to 10, any number. OK, you number one. You number two. You're right, number three. Number, you number four. You number five. Will you please go to this mic? Just um, back there. Are you standing? Or are you an event organizer? Oh, I'm sorry. That's OK. <laughs> Please come to this mic. Uh, the other five people, because I only think there's 10, can you come over onto this side for me, please? And um, so the rules are going to be, I'm going to ask a few questions, and then I'm going to try to get to the audience as quickly as possible. The question should only be relative to Evil Dead. Evil Dead Rise in particular, if you go astray and you say, Mr. Ramey and Dr. Strange too, my lovely assistant is going to. So no bad questions. And um, if you, so once you're in this line, the first five people, first five people on that side, here's what's gonna happen. I'm sorry, you decide you wanna ask a question of Bruce Campbell, which is great. Ask a question to Bruce Campbell. That means the next person behind you cannot ask Bruce Campbell a question. It's Let like me. poker, Rob. It's no two hands are the same. That's right. That's you thank can't you just play Texas fucking Hold'em all night long. <laughs> so I think Bruce spelled out the rules perfectly. If you end up the last person out of the five and you go, oh, I have to ask Alyssa a question. I want to ask it about the Vikings. You can't do that. You haven't seen the movie. You can't think of anything. You can say, all right, everyone on the panel, I have, what's your favorite superhero? And then everyone will answer that, and you won't be shamed. But if you can't, you can't ask. Uh, don't ask that question. Yeah. Please don't ask that question. So, um, uh, so we're going to tr try and make it um, punchy and fast and to get to you guys in a hurry. I'm going to kind of start this with... Um, a few questions. Oh, wait, Bruce, before we do this, you know, Alyssa and I have been working on something. Oh, have you? Yep. Yep. Oh. We have a script. We oh, want, want oh, you. Oh, you do? Yeah. Oh. And um, it's called. Is it funded? Do you have the funding for well, it? Well, we think you can help with that because it's oh, oh. Dad's Very Merry Fishing Christmas. And I think your friends at Hallmark would be very interested. Hey, <laughs> um, you know what, Rob? Um, that might fit sideways up your ass. Oh. <laughs> But thank Look, you. Appreciate that. That's OK. Just because of this evil dead thing, we thought we'd go to you first. But really, we wanted Shatner all along. So You'll get him tomorrow. I know. <laughs> so um, anyways, Rob, now. Rob, I have one question. Yes. That part that gets funny and punchy, is that after this show? Yes. <laughs> that's after this. So um, all right, Mr. Ramey. No, don't start with me. because I'm going to start with him because um, in this case, what I would call it's age before beauty. Sam, why do you think the Evil Dead, in all its different tonal qualities of each movie, the TV show, all being tonally different, has survived for so long? I think the Evil Dead have survived for so long because it's about the filmmaker's love of entertaining the audience, whether it's comedy or adventure or horror to the extreme. It's... Uh, 
always about the fans' participation also. They, the filmmakers seem to leave a lot of dark space in the frame, plant seeds for the audience's imagination, and I think that's what makes it evergreen, is that they allow the audience to provide some of the horror, leave room, the filmmakers leave room, especially Lee, for the audience's imagination. And because there is such a willing and uh, generous contributor to the horror, it seems like it's able to live a lot longer than other types of films where they show you everything. Um, also, I think the filmmakers, uh, like me, I'm never in it for the money. Uh, I'm in it to entertain the audience. It doesn't matter to me. It's the same thing to me whether they pay me $10 million to direct a movie or $9 million. It's really the same. <laughs> so, Rob, you go ahead. I got to get into directing. <laughs> so, that was the gong. Sam, you got, you got gonged by somebody. You can take it up with him later today. Um, Bruce, you see a lot of people on the convention circuit. and I do. And half of them are here today. And um, <laughs> Evil Dead somehow has transcended generations. So you see fathers and sons with ash tattoos on their, their arm. What do you think it is that bonds the family together over Evil Dead? Uh, well, I can speak mostly from my own experience uh, with the Ash character. Ash has no skills whatsoever. <laughs> so uh, the people in the audience go, ah, I could do that. <laughs> so they keep watching to see if he's going to get any smarter or better, and he kind of doesn't, but they're like, ah, shit, I'm three movies into this already. That's what, that's what I always think about your acting. Let's, let me say one thing about my acting. I said to my wife one time, you know, the way I act, I act like, like, like the audience is, is, is asleep. And she goes, no, you, you, act, you act like they're dead. You're trying to wake them from the dead. And so I divorced her ass. <laughs> Was that, was that an answer, Rob? That is the perfect answer, Bruce. I think it sums it up perfectly. Right. Leah, um, for you, Evil Dead traditionally has been a non-denominational franchise. You brought what I call the Jesuits versus the Evil Dead into the backstory of this. Can you explain what made you do that? I'm Irish. We had a lot of priests. Um, <laughs> one of our greatest and worst exports, so apologies. Um, yeah, I think... From my point of view, when I, was, when I was approaching the movie, and it was something I spoke to Sam about, was that there was three books of the dead uh, as set up an army of darkness. And I, uh, I kind of felt that if there was these evil books out there, certainly one of them, that the Catholic Church would want to have a medal or have a go with something so powerful and dark. So it seemed like a natural place to go with it. Um, and to, we hadn't seen that idea of uh, a little bit of religious undertone in an evil dead movie, so it made sense. And they had a ball with it. They loved that book. They loved that book. They fiddled big. Oh, actually, yeah, they played around with that book a lot. <laughs> Gong me, please. Could All I, right. Could I have one of those? No. A directing gong. Yes, a I'm directing into it. gong. Yeah. Cool. So, um, this is really for both them, um, Alyssa and Lily. Um, hold on. Michelle Pfeiffer said that. She, when she was doing What Lies Beneath, she was, took her inspiration from Drew Barrymore in the original Scream movie. Was there a horror movie villain or heroine that you looked to when you approached Evil Dead Rise? Do you wanna? You wanna go? You wanna? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, for me, I think, I think being in an Evil Dead film, it's so, messy, extreme, you act out the most absurd situations. So I think Laurie Petty in Tank Girl and Tony Collette in Hereditary, which was just like the uglier, the better, the weirder, the more wonderful, which is I think what the Evil Dead world gifts you. Get freaky. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I have a, an obscure one for this. <laughs> well, it's not that obscure. And actually, Lee, I don't think I told you this in prep um, that I was am I going to want to leave now? Yeah, because I figured okay. it would probably scare you. 
I I watched a lot of like reference movies before and there was something in my gut telling me I have to watch The Mask. I have to watch The Mask. <laughs> and and I I watched it and it, like there was something about like the enhancement that happened when Jim Carrey put on this ancient mask and I was like, okay, how old is this book? How old, like how long has this evil force been tied to this book without having a human to embody? And I loved like the joy of the mask. And I was like, I'm going to bring that. There has to be rage in the Deadite to be scary, but also the joy and the celebration of carnage. <laughs> and then that gave me like both joy and rage and I could do everything in between. Um, yeah. So. And, and you brought it. I think anyone that sees the movie tonight will see a deadite like no other in the sense that, um, yeah, she's, she's a little bit rude. <laughs> <laughs> to her family. So, good one. Is that going... <laughs> All right, gong starting, yeah. starting with you, please. Number one. Sure. It's just sound bop. <laughs> uh, for Mr. Cronin. Uh, oh, hello. Would you be able to talk about what it was like going from the transition of short films, uh, like Through the Night, and then going into uh, Hole in the Ground, as well as Evil Dead? Did you face um, any doubt, self-doubt? Or what was it like having to answer to uh, people with large pockets, let's say? A, that's a good and detailed question. Um, <laughs> I don't. I checked their wallets earlier, and there was nothing in there. <laughs> Somebody got them. Um, it's it's a slow journey, you know. I, like I think I might have said this in the past. There's no business like slow business, and there's nothing slower than trying to get out of the world of making short films, which is wonderful, and getting your first kind of feature film made. And you look back and account for all of this time. Um, and uh, and you kind of don't know where it's gone. But I think with, with short films, I was quite specific and precise about what I wanted to do. And I didn't want to do a lot of them. I wanted to do them to a high standard as best I could, flex my creative muscles and show what it is that I wanted to do as a movie maker. And then it was just a painful climbing of the greasiest pole imaginable. Um, and then managed to get to a place where I um, made my debut feature film. And luckily, these guys saw something in it. It's totally really different to Evil Dead Rise. Uh, like, I think the hole in the ground is like a whisper at the back of your neck. Evil Dead Rise is full frontal, frontal bloody roar in your face. So, yeah, it's, it, it was an interesting journey, and I think you just got to knuckle down and, and, and believe in what you're trying to do. Cool. Awesome. Thank you all. Thank you. Um, the second person, I'm sorry, second, uh, third person in this line, Third person. Third person. Yeah. yeah, so you better be ready. You, oh, you, you got to reprieve the person behind you. Did now I have to read this their... morning or something? <laughs> yeah. So uh, I have a question for both uh, Mr. Cronin and uh, Mr. Ramey. Uh, what are some of your per uh, personal tips and tricks oh. for shooting and editing the scare portions of the uh, of horror films? Yeah, that gong me. Oh, that was a half gong. Like, get out of gong. here. Look, I'm going to use Wait, you no. as an example. So Lee was Make asked a question. You could only ask that to Sam. Okay. So we'll let, I'm going to let you rephrase it. Okay. But now everyone understands how the game is played. <laughs> okay. But then I'm going to answer it just to mess with your system. Uh-oh. <laughs> Disruption. <laughs> that Revolt. So I have a... <laughs> now it's just random. It's go, just go ahead. So I have a question for just Mr. Ramey and Mr. Ramey only. And Lee, uh, you can answer after if you like. <laughs> so uh, what are some of your own personal tips and tricks for shooting and editing the scare portions in uh, horror films? Excuse me, horror films. Usually I want to make sure I understand what the audience, uh, what the main character wants. They need this. And it, the more you can connect the audience with that main character on their journey, whether it's to survive or reach the end of the hallway or get to the weapon or whatever it is, you want to know how desperate that person wants that so you can connect with them. And every um, obstacle in their way creates conflict, drama. And um, the more you can connect with that person, the stronger it's going to be. And then I try to be aware of the manipulation. The audience is aware that this is a game on some level as they're watching the movie in the back of their mind, they know it's a sleight of hand show and maybe we'll hit them here. No, we're gonna pull back. We're gonna give them a little more. No, I hit them. <laughs> so I'm aware of the rhythms of it and try and 
vary them up and surprise the audience for maximum punch when we do deliver a suspense break. Thank you very much, much appreciated. I'm gonna add one thing to Sam's comment. Both Sam and John Carpenter came from a magic background, so they love to do those tricks. Well, you're not looking and it's over here. So um, I think that helps with horror directors. So, um, hey Rob, what about like, is this chopped liver No, over that is here? chopped liver, they, they are chopped liver for right now. Oh, oh. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't understand second. the Byzantine rules. Yes, yes, don't you worry. All right. I thought this was a fucking Q&A. It is. <laughs> it's coming. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, hi, my name's Leo, and my question is directed to Bruce Campbell. Yep. I wanted to know, what was your creative thought process being the main lead for this series for so long and finally giving that, like, step off to, like, the next generation and making this new film? Uh, I did Ash vs. Evil Dead, the TV show, so I could go back like George Lucas and fix some shit with that character. Because <laughs> I had about 25 years of experience from, the, from Army of Darkness, which killed the franchise. <laughs> we weren't laughing. <laughs> but it was an opportunity to go back as an adult actor, because the irony in my life is I'm... I'm best known for the thing that I was least qualified for, which was starring in the first Evil Dead movie. Because we didn't know shit from Shinola. I, I didn't. Sam knew. Uh, Shinola's the shoe polish, I think. That's right, yeah. So I didn't know one from the other. Uh, but over time, uh, now that I could, I wanted to actually go back and apply myself as a, a semi-trained actor now to go back to that one and a half dimensional doofus and flesh him out. And we, we, we did that for 30 episodes, so uh, that felt good. And then I retired him. <laughs> that felt even better. <laughs> and now we turn it over to the next generation, and to both of these fine women I say, uh, sorry for what we did put you through. Uh, hopefully 40 years from now, you'll be thanking us for what we put you through. I mean, no, these, nobody, the Evil Dead movies, uh, no one makes a harder movie to make than an Evil Dead movie. I have zero sympathy for any actor on any movie ever. <laughs> I don't want to hear your problems. Not even their problems. I didn't want to hear their problems. I don't give a shit. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, but, yeah. <laughs> but it was actually very fun to do that because uh, I felt like it was warranted. All right. Now we are going to jump over this line, but you are stuck <laughs> in a tricky place. You have Alyssa and Lily. Um, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I guess I would ask. Um, only one of them. Only one of them. Only one. Oh yeah, I know. A lot of rules. I do a lot of rules. Alyssa, I'm getting a headache. Uh, Gong his ass. <laughs> Gong his ass right now. Yeah, yeah sorry, man. Um, this is for my friend Gavin, who's really wanting to get into the horror film industry and wants to know what advice you would have for someone just starting out. Oh, gosh. Um, you just have to keep trying. I think persistence is key. You know, this business is a hard one. There are ups and there are downs. There are no guarantees. You have good years, you have bad years. And um, to me, I think I love what I do so much. They give us a hard time and, and say that, you know, Evil Dead is one of the hardest things to film. But I tell you what, it beats being unemployed. Um, <laughs> and, and honestly, like, I think persistence and the love of what you do um, is what will get you there in the end. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Uh, I guess this question is for Lily. Oh, that, uh, that's a bad thing. Did you approve this next person, Rob? I didn't have to. She's on top of the game. Okay. Uh, <laughs> wow. Listen, I'm out here, okay? Okay. So, okay. So my question, obviously, is for Lily. I just wanted to ask you how it's... Uh, you're the next heroine of the Evil Dead franchise. How, how does that make you feel? <laughs> I'm glad you made her nervous with that question. That's exactly what I wanted. Perfect. <laughs> Be on edge. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I mean, I feel extremely grateful to. I feel like, especially as a woman, you rarely get the opportunity to be super physical, 
and to be in your body. It's like I did a lot of corset, like period dramas and I'm the pretty girlfriend. I'm asking the questions to move the plot along. Now I'm kicking in fucking doors. Now I have a fucking <laughs> chainsaw. Yeah. No. yeah. I'm, like, I'm like, okay, what the fuck is that? I think that was a good gong. That was a good gong. Oh, it was. I was like, I was like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> Did you not get the gong tone manual that we were supposed to train for what each one means? Damn, Lil. Okay, okay, that was like, amen, sure. But I have a follow-up that I'm just, which leads into this, Lily. One of the hallmarks of the Evil Dead franchise is that the hero takes a long time to answer that call. They kind of go through portions of the movie with no agency till they finally become the hero. Did that pose problems as an actress? One thing that was awesome is we shot in chronological order, so you actually felt like you were in this live video game of Lee conducting and moving you forward and giving you all these obstacles. Um, but the one thing I love about the scrappy hero, the one that kind of feels like they're about to fail, can't quite use their weapons very well, which you clearly demonstrated. Um, no, just kidding, <laughs> kidding. No, um, that, what I love so much is that it, with the Evil Dead situations, it. <laughs> Like that. Well, I'm I'm actually agreeing with you. We got a note from Stars during Ash versus Evil Dead that Ash was improperly handling the shotgun because I would go, "All right, listen, you, what are you looking at? Hey, get over there with that thing," and I would I would push the bullets like Jimmy Cagney would, and and um, so yeah, I agree. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, okay, yeah. Almost. But yeah, I mean, the one thing I do love is is shooting in chronological order and that the film kind of just slowly seeps and then turns itself up after the first 10 minutes, basically, and chucks the domestic setting into the blender. So I don't know. I feel like I didn't have to be patient at all. I feel like with this film in particular, I'm like, there isn't... It's all pace, especially shooting it. It was, it was an intense situation from the beginning. Yeah. And Alyssa, you play a mother who has a tattoo business. Did you research that? No. <laughs> you know what? There you go. <laughs> Good game's a fast game. All right. Good game's a fast game. Thank you so much. Thank you. Over here. Whoa. Now, everybody has had a question, but we start that again. I hope you understand the rules. Mm -hmm. He broke his own rule asking a question twice to the same person. First off, I just want to say, Bruce, I really love your tie. It looks great. Fantastic. Uh, thank you. Uh, for Lee, I have a question. When a lot of directors come into like a legacy sequel kind of thing where it's so much further down the franchise, it's not necessarily about the original elements, um, they don't always have a connection to the original film. So what's your connection to like the first trilogy of the Evil Dead films? Did you grow up with them? How did you feel about them? That kind of thing. Yeah, um, very personal, actually, like for me, yeah. Evil Dead. Um, it was quite inspiring in my childhood. So... There's a large age gap between me and uh, my next sibling. I think it's called a late lamb. Um, or in Ireland, we call it a burst Johnny. Um, and, and I was a burst Johnny. Um, and therefore, because I had all these older siblings, I saw a lot of horror movies I should have seen before, uh, before my time. And it was actually my dad showed me Evil Dead and Evil Dead 2 back to back on VHS when I was about eight years old. I had no idea what I was watching, um, but I knew it was important. And it wasn't until my early teenage years that I was like, oh, it's those guys, and how are they getting away with it? Um, but it, was, I, it made a massive impression. We all know why. I don't, you know, there's so much praise for those movies. Um, but to me, it was the energy, the scare factor, and the entertainment. And that was the thing I wanted to carry to Evil Dead Rise. Um, I think for fans, and I'm sure there's a few of you out there, I guess, the, um, I think you're going to have a lot of fun with the Easter eggs. You got to go and see it in the theaters probably three times opening weekend to pick up all of them. <laughs> um, and I wouldn't want you to miss out. <laughs> Thank you. Over here, please. Uh, yeah, my question is for the producers. Um, Evil Dead Rises is one of the best horror trailers I've seen in a really long time. I was curious if you could talk about uh, the process to cut that and then approve it and distribute it. L um... There's a, there's a woman somewhere out here who we worked with She's right there. I can't see anybody. Susie, Susie right here, Susie Shen. She was at um, Sony back when we did Evil Dead uh, with Fetty Alvarez in 2013. She's now at Warner Brothers. She is the um, master, the mistress of 
all of the spots. Um, Stand up so and take a bow. Please. Hey, yeah. hey. Nice. Nicely done. Nicely done. So all the way along, even when we were not, um, when we were destined to be a streamer, um, Susie and a, and a certain uh, core group within Warner Brothers said, we have the materials to open a movie, and they fought for this. And when the new regime came in, um, their brilliant materials and a really great movie got us a theatrical. So um, they, they cut them, and we look at them and give a few notes. But really, they come to us, and they're great. All right, thank so. you. Okay. Thank you this for your side. question. And you know what? That was okay. You can ask anybody but Lee. Okay. <laughs> um, so it's it's okay with the rules to ask three at a time. Sure. Okay. Uh, this question is for uh, Bruce, Lily, and Alyssa. Um, so I haven't seen Evil Dead uh, Rise yet, but I assume that you guys uh, sustained some pretty gnarly injuries in the movie, and I've watched all of the Evil Dead. So. <laughs> um, what is that like as an actor watching it after the fact and kind of seeing yourself not just on screen, but like on screen enduring like the worst things that could happen to a person? <laughs> Trauma, that's what that is. A little PTSD. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, what do I say? I, I, watching it back I think it's not just like physically what we went through but like those days on set that you have really good memories of there's a scene in the film that I won't spoil but it was one of the first scenes that Lily and I got to work together um, just the two of us and we hadn't really had a lot of time together and that day on set we got the giggles and bonded and it was just like oh my god I love this girl she's so amazing we had so much fun and actually Lee got a little bit pissed off with us because yeah wasting time on set giggles <laughs> <laughs> it's what you have to do it's like when you're entertaining and exercising we needed a sisterly bond to a very method be scary be scared roll camera let's go roll ca <laughs> hyperventilate hyperventilate pretend you're gonna die for six months off you go um, I mean, when you watch it, I feel like it's way more... <sighs> Shooting a movie, the amount it takes you do, the mess that it is, the blood, sweat and tears, the stress, the running out of money, I feel like all of those elements, shooting is much worse than watching. Watching is a celebration that we pulled off the fucking thing and that it's wicked and that you look way better, way cooler than you are in real life <laughs> is really nice. Um, then the actual reality of me trying to roll under a roller door and, like, taking out a chunk of my leg with the gun and like just not doing anything quite properly, I guess. But then you watch Lee's cut and you're like, damn, I look much better. I think it's worth, I don't know if this is against the rules, Rob, but tough. I think it's worth noting that what Lily was talking about with the injuries, like Lily would come to me every day with the f a fresh injury or a fresh bruise. And I did say, I hope you kept photographs of them all. I think you should, you should have a wall of pain in your house. I did, and then Warner, I thought maybe Warner Brothers would be a bit worried about it, being like, look at the abuse, basically, so I didn't want to post it. Well, I have a question kind of for everyone then on the set, or up here, is the Evil Dead movies are really difficult to make. Um, the cast is often wet, tired, bruised, bloody, and always sticky. <laughs> Um, I do, do not you, understand do the gong I don't, at all. I don't, I don't, I don't. Well, she's the master of it. Um, does that translate into the audience enjoyment? I have a theory, Rob. A movie that's easy to make is hard to watch. If you're sitting around on set, hey, hey can I have another croissant sandwich? <laughs> you're not working hard enough. <laughs> but but if but if you wish your mother never met your father, you might you might be onto something. Well, we were onto something then. <laughs> yeah. Um, do you, Sam Lee? You're the directors. You you deal with actors who are asking them to do things often, time and time again, even though you know that they are miserable. The audience likes to see Bruce punished. <laughs> uh, why do you think they call him Bruce? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Lee, um, I was very fortunate with um, with Alyssa and Lily to actually work with two people that were so grounded. I have to say that it's a nice moment in front of lots of people to be able to say how grounded they were. So I felt quite bad that I then kicked the shit out of them uh, so much. And they really did have to go through the ringer. Um, but 
I didn't feel too bad. There was, I was only discussing this the other day. Little Nell, who's not here, I did feel bad one day with her where she had to get under like a settee under a sofa, and that was really uncomfortable for her. Um, but you guys were relatively comfortable all the time, right? So totally. Yeah, I thought so. <laughs> it's fun. We were so lucky. That's all I'm going to say. Had um, so many people go septic. Um, <laughs> really. Uh, in the book, I can't even mention names. Um, uh, all right. Who, who was this side? If you don't know, Rob, nobody knows. I do. I do. So with the, with the rules, that question was for everyone. Does that wipe those people out? And no. Go? They, uh, this, he knows. He's okay. Got Bruce and, and Lee. Look, I'm good. I've got a memory still. So go ahead. Uh, I'm, uh, I think I'm clear on the rules, but I kind of just wanted to get gonged. But my, uh, my question also relates to the, the, the setting and uh, really what makes this film unique is what I really respect about the Evil Dead movies, and especially this one is how... Um, unique this one is setting in in a high rise so ev uh, evolving that from traditionally in a cabin um, how was that setting used uh, to explore like the visual language and especially with the leads exploring those themes of like uh, sisterhood and motherhood and um, all of that that's a worthy question <laughs> you just got a light gong on that one <laughs> thank you so Look, I had that on my sheet here, and you've kind of asked a question for everyone, so even though it shouldn't go to Lee, I'm going to let him start, um, because this was you. You wrote it. Yeah. I guess home is where the horror is for me. I'm really drawn to horror in domestic circumstances. I think it's the easiest... It's making it like a weird childhood. Um, I think it's the, uh, it's, the, it's the easiest cheat sheet and shortcut to engage an audience is to bring them to somewhere familiar. Uh, and so right away when I met, first met with Sam and we started to talk about the story, I knew I wanted to take it to an urban place. The guys all wanted something new. Like, I'm a huge Evil Dead fan, but if they dropped a script on me and it was like Cabin in the Woods, I'd be like, I'll go see it in the cinema, but I don't want to make that movie. I needed to do something kind of new. Um, and it felt automatic for me to explore family. And I felt that it would be really good to put kids against deadites. Um, and, you know, you'll enjoy that. You're going to enjoy that part. I like kids, honest. Um, the <clears throat> um, yeah, so like to me, home is where the horror is. Domestic circumstance is the way to go. And it was great to be able to take the toolbox that these guys put in place over the years. That was the funnest part of making this movie, was, was actually the writing of it and building out a story and then being able to dig my fingers into the lore and bring all that color and madness um, into the city. That was a rambling Oh, that's a good answer. Um, it, was, it, was a, it was a long ass question, though, to be fair. It was fair, yeah. <laughs> and so, really, I'm going to follow up with that. So, um, Alyssa and Lily and Lee, um, I would often see you in Lee's office discussing acting things and um, uh, always kind of wondered what's going on there. Can you three trash talk? Tell us. Um, uh, what work you did together to make the relationship, both the family relationship and the relationship between the two sisters, seem so real? Well, I've just talked, so you guys go. Um, I don't think we had to work very hard at all with that. Like, you never really know who you're going to be working with. You but get shit ones. You yeah, shit you ones do sometimes. get some shit ones. You weren't shit. Uh, you weren't shit either. <laughs> <laughs> See, it was that easy. Like... <laughs> Sutherland, Sullivan, you know. Both I'm from Bris Vegas, Brisbane. Australia. Yeah, worldwide <laughs> casting, yeah, we were both from the same area. So yeah. you'd done all the work for us. Man. Yeah. I think we hung out a lot, though. Like, like yeah. from, from an, I, I don't like the whole go in the corner and be a tree. And anyone that does like that, I'm not interested. But you guys, we just talked. That's where we started. Yeah. The first thing I did was, say, was I was like, drop those Aussie accents and start being Americans and kind of forced you to talk like that as much as possible and then got you to hang out as a family. One of the most interesting things I observed was after about two days, I started to notice that the relationships in the script were playing out in real time. So, like, in the movie, the way characters interacted, like, little Nell was hanging out with Gabby more when she was tired, like she would if they were the characters, and you guys really found an affinity in And that's and I was detail. Just, yeah, wicked to everyone. Nah, you were, yeah, a little bit, but you were quite, you were quite sweet sometimes. Quite once. sweet sometimes. 
detail of that set was insane. Like you could open up drawers and you would find like little hidden pieces of your character and their past and their history. It was really. It was did you steal awesome. anything? Yeah, I did. Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> Have you ever taken anything from a set? No. Yes. No. Maybe. Uh, my brother Don has the shotgun from Evil Dead. Uh, not because he gives a shit about the movie, he just likes guns. <laughs> Sam, Sam, what's the, um, what have you ever taken from a set as your souvenir? I do, I specifically take a souvenir from each movie I make. So, uh, in uh, Evil, Evil... Do you have uh, the Spider-Man suit? I have um, underneath your clothes? the Kandarian dagger from within the woods. And, it, you know, it was a stick that Bruce put oh, in the yeah, ground, yeah. sawed off so it could just be placed on the body of one of the dead, dead people. Um, it seemed like it was burrowed deep in their body. I've got all sorts, a tiny little memento from every picture. Lee, what have you got from this movie? The Book of the Dead. Oh. Hey, oh. I have one, too. I guess I got the backup. Yeah. <laughs> I took a few things. Yeah, I took loads of stuff. Good. I took the perf <laughs> yeah, like I fill a case. I've got like the clock. I got the book. I have another book. Uh, yeah, I, I took the performance. I probe. got a medallion. But what I took most was the memories of meeting you guys. <laughs> uh. All right. It's in the bottom drawer at home. Yes, over here, please. Oh. Hi, I'm Jazz. Um, this is actually like a slightly related question, but has there anything? Have you ever like seen? any like evil dead merch and you're like oh god and is there anything that you own by chance like you just look at it and you're like you know it's like oh in a good <laughs> way good or a bad way yeah. whatever way because merchandising <laughs> has gotten a lot more like, accurate and a lot better now they used to take like masters of, of the universe bodies and put like hercules's <laughs> head on it now they scan you and so my latest one from Mash vs. Evil Dead, I'm a craggy fucker. I mean, <laughs> I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> I mean, like, like the first like Evil Dead merch I ever saw in person was a lunchbox, and my friend kept their substances in it. And I was like, oh. <laughs> it was very, I was like, wow, very creative. And they opened it, it was all themed. It was like zombie themed grinder and everything. I was just wondering. Like, it had his face on it. Do you have it with you, or does you use a friend around? And could we meet out back in, like, half an hour? No comment. This is any question for anyone, but generally. I don't know. I'm going to leave that to you. Murph, even that book. I've that book you guys did, the one about your whole life story and stuff like that. We did give Warren, his first name I forget, Bill Warren, a lot of information and details on that. Look, merchandising is funny because um, we actually don't control a lot of it. Mm -hmm. um, some is controlled by Studio Canal on Evil Dead 2. Some is controlled by um, Amazon MGM on Army of Darkness. They have been very bad to Bruce about that because they don't get his approvals and they put up... Well, uh, look, other countries <laughs> get to do whatever they want. Uh, Army of Darkness is called Captain Supermarket in Japan. <laughs> And they basically dropped acid and then designed the poster. <laughs> I'm like, huh? <laughs> we did a movie called Crime Wave, a classic that I'm sure you saw. Um, <laughs> overseas, it was called um, Italy. It was the two craziest killers in the world. <laughs> another great title. And then in France, it was called Death on the Grill. <laughs> like you'd get hit by a car, like oh. death death on the grill. I know how that feels. <laughs> well, I'm sorry that you do. <laughs> All right. Over here, please. Yeah, please. Save Bruce. <laughs> Save him. Um, I think it's obvious that y'all are hilarious and you have wonderful senses of humor. Uh, the Evil Dead franchise always has this glorious, visceral, uh, disgusting sense of humor. How did you balance uh, for Evil Dead Rises uh, or in your past performances um, the comedy and the horror. I wouldn't call Evil Dead Rise uh, a laugh fest. <laughs> Unless you don't like kids, as I said. <laughs> <laughs> then it's the funniest fucking movie you're ever gonna see in your life. <laughs> but, I, I mean, each, we do, as producers, we do wanna give the filmmakers their call of what tone they want. And so, you know, um, Lee took a, more of a serious tone like the very first Evil Dead. Mm -hmm. 
which wasn't really meant to be funny, but it was. <laughs> and then Evil Dead 2 is just kind of a really wacky, and Army of Darkness isn't even really a horror movie. Even though it got an NC-17 for fucking talking skeletons. But yeah. <laughs> I think just quickly to add to that, I think for, for, for fans, me being one, as, I, as I've said before, if it's not as bawdy or as crazy or as cartoonish as Evil Dead 2. It's nowhere near as midnight black as Evil Dead 2013. There is a levity to it. There is a humor to it that comes from how insane the things that happen to these people are. So you will laugh um, whether you like it or not. Thank you. That's true. Um, I have a question. Um, OK, go ahead, because then I'm going to have a lot of questions after you. Hello to all. Uh, my question is uh, regarding uh, what's next in the franchise. Uh, being this the first one that is set in a city, uh, w would any of you consider, l let's suppose a, a script comes up that, that takes place in space, like other franchises did. <laughs> Would any of you consider to be to take that seriously? To be a yeah, because that's when we're completely out of ideas. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks yeah. for ruining my pitch. <laughs> <laughs> Look, we were approached many, many years ago for Ash versus Freddy versus Jason or something like that. We just yeah, we had a five-minute conversation, and this is how it went. Oh, hey, yeah, Ash can fight Freddy and Jason. And I was like, perfect, now he can kill both of those fuckers. <laughs> and that's what they said. You, <laughs> they, they gonged that idea, because they went, oh, you can't kill him. Sorry. You can, you, can't, you, can, you can grind Jason's face off with a boat propeller, and his eyes will open before the end credits roll. You can't kill him. So that, it, it was a creatively bankrupt concept. Um, World of Evil Dead, the Deadites are the villain. And in this one, we have a supervillain, uh, Ellie, the mother, played by Alyssa. It, um, when we took the script around to sell it, it made it very tricky with buyers who were terribly afraid of that idea. Alyssa, um, how did you prepare to be a Deadite? Um, I... This was the first character that I kind of approached from a movement standpoint first. Uh, each job I have, it's a different thing that gets me like the, the first seed of a character. And for Deadite Ellie, I put together a playlist and I spent many hours moving around my hotel room in New Zealand and I had two weeks of quarantine as well. Um, so I actually did it from, from a movement standpoint and kind of inhabited this character and it, um, yeah, kind of gets you into like a flow state and I built muscle memory of that and that's, that's a, it kind of built from there. Mm. Um, Lily and Bruce, um, you both have been covered in a tremendous amount of blood. I have many pictures of um, Lily standing outside, head to toe, covered in blood, trying to not to be too sticky. How do you deal with that? I covered uh, the inside of my trailer uh, like your grandmother's house. All the, all, hey, don't be gonging that shit. <laughs> <laughs> covered with plastic because I'm I'm getting on everything, and so I can't. Wreck it or Rob will charge me to fix the, the trailer that I wrecked. But my wife comes walking in one day. She goes, and I was just sitting there in a funk. And she goes, you look, you, you act like you're sitting in a poopy diaper. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I think I have poopy diaper syndrome from sitting in this shit for an extended period of time. It, uh, it actually does damage your psyche over time. Part of the reason for not continuing Ash is I didn't want to start my day on a fucking cellar floor again. I just, it seemed like every day I'd, I'd be looking at the, a, a, a bare cellar floor and go, God damn, I'm still here. I haven't, <laughs> Ted, Ted Raimi came to, to play Henrietta in Ash vs. Evil Dead. Ted and I looked at each other. We were like, wow, things have really changed. Not dead. We really, we're just hitting it out of the park here 35 years later. Same fucking scene all over again. <laughs> I'm not sure if that was an answer. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. And Lily, because I just remember you, especially towards the end of the movie after lockdown where no one could 
touch or do anything, all those stupid rules. Just standing outside, not moving. <laughs> in the sun, hoping that the sticky icky would melt and maybe be, give me some sort of relief with the sweat, but it doesn't. It congeals and it gets more sticky and you will connect to anything. Like I'd be laying in my trailer and you would pull your flesh and you would like you would see it all just be literally like you like elastic skin stuck to things. My dress was raw silk. So all of a sudden I'm just like pulling off material, just ripping skin. But it's not that. Then throughout your day though, you're touching things all oh, yeah. day long. And anything that you've lunch. touched has been infected. Yeah. By the sticky disease. Yeah. And it just keeps by the end of the day. There's nothing in there that isn't slightly sticky. I would walk around with like a spray water bottle because even your eyes would get stuck. Yeah. So you'd have to yeah, spray to, your face with the water bottle. Yeah. Like to awaken it. Exactly. Yeah. You go cr cr like crinkly. Uh, and first like... Evil Dead, the best way to get out of my shit at the end of a day was to walk into the shower with your clothes on. Yeah, that was crank it up yeah. and just wait. <laughs> and just wait to stop moving yeah, again. Because no, then it would go. It would start, it, and that was the grossest part, because then you were in a poopy diaper. You at were in that a poopy point. diaper. And you just take the clothes off right there, baby. I think being like dunked in the elevator where it was everywhere was Ev the yeah. worst yeah. moment of my life. And the yeah. best, though. That's well, that, the thing, that's the Evil Dead experience. You're like, never will I ever get to do this again. But I also fucking hate my life so much. <laughs> <laughs> that's Evil Dead. But it translates to the audience enjoyment. That's uh, and the reason we're here. Um, any other people from the audience here with anyone? Yes. Those two people, please come up to the mic. Anybody on this side? Walk on up. We're getting sloppy with the rules, but that's okay. Here we go. Failure is the best teacher. Tell me about a failure or fuck up that helped you learn something, even specifically on this film, that maybe added to the experience. I think you guys have been around longer, so you've had more failures than me. <laughs> Probably. I, I actually have one. It goes to the Deadites. So the Deadites came from a small movie that we made to raise money for Evil Dead called Within the Woods. And Bruce was the monster, and he slept in full makeup. I just remember we were at my parents' farm, eyeball hanging out on this side, lying on the grass trying to sleep because um, we had been shooting all night long, slept in full makeup. I felt sorry for him at that time. <laughs> We had a gag that um, something was to happen with his hand being chopped off, but it didn't come off. And then Bruce took the latex and bit his own hand off in that, which was incredibly effective and uh, helped us raise money for Evil Dead uh, to go make the movie. So that was a, a failure that turned into cash. You talk about failure. We Our second movie, we did Evil Dead. It made money. It did well. The investors, it was great. So we thought... This is easy street, man. So we want to make a movie that doesn't have any blood. There's dancing, singing, romance. And it was called Crime Wave. And uh, that film wasn't released. It escaped. Uh, and we kind of thought our, our, we thought that was, well, <laughs> well, we made two movies in the entertainment business. All right. And we, I, I thought that was it. I thought it was over. And then Sam thought, well, maybe Ash didn't die <laughs> at the end of the first Evil Dead. Great. Wait, so hold, uh, come back here. <laughs> Don't be so dismissive, because here's the point. <laughs> <laughs> there is a point, There's because the point is now the three of us, we have what I would call a crime wave meter. <laughs> and you can see what certain projects come up, and you go, ooh, 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 my crime wave meter is... Ooh, it's starting to get in the red. Abort, abort, abort. Say no to that. Say no to that. You just, you know which projects are going to be a problem now. So you learn. Okay. So we learn from that very much. Now I have the crime wave meter to help me. Amazing, amazing. Lily and Alyssa, as you look back on your career, is there something, like Bruce said in Evil Dead, he, the first movie, he was unprepared to be a hero. Do you have acting experiences that now you look back on and, and built your fine-tuned your career off those moments? I mean, yeah, it's humiliating to watch previous work that you've done in a great in a great way that you see yourself age on screen, which is a really bizarre Yeah, thing. stick around, lady. <laughs> <laughs> Hallmark. <laughs> yeah, one, one word, Hallmark. <laughs> the new love boat. <laughs> but I don't know. I mean, the failure is always the thing. I can't think of anything specifically because I feel like I've done it a whole bunch and there's things that make you cringe, things that you're proud of. 
And um, I don't know, I think if you have an ego and if you start not wanting failure instead of realizing that that's just, I mean, it's not possible. To, to, it's not a thing to avoid. It's a thing to welcome. But yeah, the shit heaps of failure. And I think on set, filmmaking is just a series of failures that you're trying to knit together. <laughs> um, so I think it's a daily thing. It's a daily thing. It's a take by take. Yeah. I I would say I came on to... I'm going to talk about Vikings. Sorry, Rob. Go ahead. All right. Um, I came on to the series right in the last episode of the first season. And it was like my first big job um, and I was so nervous and I watched that episode. Well, I can't watch it now, um, but I watched it the first time around and I was embarrassed. I can't imagine how embarrassed I would be now to watch it. And I remember between that first season and going back for the second season, I was like, I am not letting that happen again. <laughs> and you do learn, I would say, that the difference between season one, episode nine to season two, episode one is stark. And uh, yeah, but I'm grateful for it. So. It's such a shame being filmed failing for a living. That's <laughs> part of it. <laughs> On this side of things, you can't see any permanent record. You guys are just yeah. getting things out of the park all the time. So. Um, which side are we? Yes. I think we're saying one more. Ooh, one more. The clock, I can see the clock is running out. Oh my God, now I get the stupid one. But um, for the new cast members, actually, uh, since the premiere is tonight, uh, maybe in conjunction with that, uh, have you been contacted about uh, joining the cast for the Evil Dead video game uh, out right now? Maybe a tie-in or join Bruce in the woods there? <laughs> It's, you don't want to be in the middle of that one. Long story. <laughs> Next so, question, I guess. Yeah. Wait, it's possible. Question. Surely this was it's a prime possible. gong moment. Yeah, it was. It is possible. Uh, I hope you guys can settle a bit for the franchise for me. Uh, I'm from the UP, um, and I want to know, is the original cabin a youper or a troll? What's the troll part? I know the youper from your the, the upper peninsula. You're a youper. Yeah. What's the troll? The you're youpers call anything under the bridge a troll, like upper no northern. Uh. Oh, yeah, yeah. I made a movie up there uh, in um, gay Michigan. <laughs> they had a bar there where the entrepreneur had a T-shirt, go straight to the gay bar. Mm -hmm. uh, there's nothing up there, sir. <laughs> You'd be surprised. Okay, so we don't really care what you call us <laughs> because you probably wouldn't want to hear what we called you. Yes, please, over here. <laughs> Time is not on our side. Okay, I have a question. Anyone can answer it. Something that's so uh, quintessentially Evil Dead for me is when there's a bloody scene and the actor always has their mouth open. It's just mouth open, blood in the mouth. How um, else is it going to get in your mouth? <laughs> It gets me every single time. Um, what does uh, fake blood taste like? I would love to know. It has not improved in 40 years. No, it still sucks. I went blind once. Uh, I was chainsawing a demon who was above me. <laughs> and doggone if gravity doesn't do the trick. Uh, I, I just, I went completely blind. And so I had to wipe the shit out of my eyes. But I guess Ash would have done that too, you know? So, yeah, it's gnarly, stingy, horrible stuff that has Sweet chemicals in it. And chem I'm yeah. shit what yeah. the modern film crew tells you. Oh, it's all organic, but all natural. Lies. Bullshit. Lies. <laughs> Bullshit. And there are different kinds as well. There are, like, yeah. sweet-tasting ones and bitter-tasting ones. <laughs> and I think there was a day on set where I was prepped for the sweet-tasting one, and I thought that's what I was getting, and then we got the bitter taste. By the way, uh, yeah. this young man sitting next to me here, his favorite thing is to initiate actors with their first cup of blood in the face. And no one's gonna do it but him. Give me that cup. He just takes it away from him because he knows exactly how far his arm is and where the edge of frame is. He's a filmmaker, right? He has such horrible, deadly, accurate aim. <laughs> and there is no, no acting necessary when that happened because you go, <gasps> And Sam's like, perfect, print it. <laughs> so, there's so many, we learned some good techniques. The cup in the face works all the time. If you want a little finesse though, a paintbrush, a four inch paintbrush in a little bucket, you can go. 
and create a slash across somebody's face. Lots of ways to do it. Lots I lots poured a whole bucket over Lee's head on the last day of yeah. shooting. I didn't, I didn't like it. <laughs> I know you did it. I know you did it. I, I, I don't want to do that again. <laughs> well, I see zero, zero, zero. Yeah, we want to thank everybody here and a big round of applause for the wonderful...